Welcome to lecture 23 of biology 116 entitled nutrition. As we went over digestion, we went over the specific processes and compartments associated with the digestive process, mainly in humans. What we're going to be doing now is looking a little bit deeper in what we eat, what we consume as human beings and as organisms as a part of our attempt to survive. Remember, life is all about survival and reproduction, and we've certainly covered reproduction in great detail. We're focusing right now on survival, and a big part of survival is eating, ingesting, and digesting, and absorbing. Now this lecture is going to be focusing on not how we do it, but what we use and what we utilize for this energy that we constantly need. So in order to begin, we'll entitle this first flowchart just a basic introduction. So we'll entitle it Intro. And here what we're going to first talk about is the idea and term that is nutrition. What does it mean when you're talking about nutrition? Because we see this term a lot, but in terms of, let's say, biology and specifically understanding this, what does it mean? Well, nutrition is simply going to be focusing on the idea of taking food in, meaning that we are going to ingest food. And once we take food in, we have to ingest and then digest, right? And that's breaking down food. So we'll write that down, breaking down food after we have taken it in. Once you've done that, the part that nutrition is focusing on is the following. It is using the food. Nutrition is all about how you, within the body, use the food that you've taken in, you've broken down. How is it of use to you? This is a process that's going to be done characteristically by animals. And we know this because animals themselves are heterotrophic. And as heterotrophs, we'll write that down right over here, we have to consume other things. Other things will make organic material and we will consume those other things. And there are a variety of ways to be heterotrophic. The, the name, namely, the three ways to do this type of heterotrophy is either as an herbivore, where you are strictly going to be consuming plants, primary producers, or as a carnivore. And a carnivore, of course, will be consuming those most of the time herbivores or you can be an omnivore and that's what humans are classified as a combination of both omni means everything and vore is referring to what you eat so we have herbivores the herb eaters the carn eaters the meat eaters and the omni the everything eaters these are the types of heterotrophy that we see in animals now the focus of here and this lecture is how we use what we eat so basically if you look at all three of these all the heterotrophs, all animals, they basically have one common denominator, no matter what type of food they eat, no matter what they eat, who they eat, and that common denominator is the following. All of these need to eat the correct amount. This is what nutrition is all about, focusing on the correct amount um, and also the correct types of food. Correct amount and the correct types of of food. Two main things studied in nutrition is how much you eat and what you eat. And how does that relate to how it's used within the body? That's what we're going to be focusing on. Now, in order to understand what you eat, how much you eat of it, and what type of food to eat, you have to understand a basic premise of nutrition, and that's the needs of the organism. So we'll entitle the next part of this flowchart, Nutritional Needs. And this is going to be the first look at it. So we'll entitle this as a subtitle of nutritional, let me spell that correctly, nutritional, still didn't spell it correctly, there we go, nutritional needs, and this will be Roman numeral one. We'll continue with nutritional needs in the next flowchart. So basically what we're focusing on here is figuring out what makes a diet adequate, meaning what makes a diet successful and good for the organism. There are basically three nutritional needs that every heterotrophic animal, every animal needs to cover in order to satisfy an adequate diet, a diet that will promote survival. One of the foremost needs of nutrition, of what's consumed and used within the body, is the following. Number one, there's three of them. The first one that we'll focus on is chemical energy. As a heterotroph, you need to consume things in order to get a need from your nutrition, which is chemical energy. This is going to be the following. This is when you ingest chemical energy, you're going to consume something, let's say, and the reason why you're consuming something is because you can't produce a very important molecule. You ingest chemical energy in order to produce a very important molecule known as ATP. 
You can't make ATP on your own. You need to ingest things that can be broken down and turned into ATP in a variety of different steps that we've seen through cell respiration, let's say for example, and that's why we need to consume them because it provides us energy in the form of ATP. When we talk about energy, specifically chemical energy in the realm of nutrition, we often focus on this term known as a calorie. Now, this is not the typical calorie that you're used to looking at. This is a different calorie. Notice that this is spelled with a capital C. There's a difference when you spell it with a capital C versus a lowercase c. A capital C calorie de de denotes 1,000 lowercase c calories. So this is basically denoting a capital C calorie is one kilocalorie, in other words. So it's 1,000 regular old calories. And when we're focusing on a one kilocalorie, what does that really mean? When we talk about one kilocalorie, let's take a look at both of these terms, all of these terms together. We basically are stating the following, and this is a little fancy chemical way of saying it, but we'll break it down. If this all just means the amount of heat to raise the temperature of one kilogram of H2O of water by one degree Celsius. Okay, this is something you often see in a chemistry classroom. What are we saying here? Remember, energy can be in the form of heat. And if we measure energy, or let's say measure heat, which is, you know, one and the same thing, just different forms of energy, if we figure out how much energy, how much heat it takes to raise the temperature of one kilogram of one, uh, one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius, that gives us a calorie measurement. Don't worry too much about that derivation of what this really means. Focus on the values associated with the different types of chemical energy that we consume. Let's focus on the different sources of chemical energy based off of the nutrition of heterotrophs. Sources include things like carbs. You have probably heard of carbs before. Carbohydrates usually come in terms of nutrition in the form of starches and also cellulose. These are storage forms of carbs that we consume from organisms that are basically composed of starch or composed of cellulose or store it at a higher rate. And what we basically notice about starch and cellulose is the following. This is going to serve as our main source of energy. Carbs themselves in the form of starch and cellulose are our main source of energy, chemical energy that is. Basically, these are the same, this is the main source of our ATP. For that reason, we will state that about 50% of our total calories that are consumed and this is the calorie spelled with capital C, notice the capital, 50% of it will come from the carbs. And in addition, a value to recognize is that one gram of pure carbs will give us enough energy that will equate to about four kilocalories, capital C here. So that's what we focus on when we look at carbs. But we also consume other things. Other things include proteins. And if we look at proteins, they give us actually about the same amount of chemical energy. One gram of protein, pure protein, will give us about four capital C calories. And then in addition, what we have to focus on is the other source of chemical energy that we consume, and those are lipids. Lipids are sometimes referred to as fats. Lipids are very high in energy. They are extremely high in energy. They are going to be more than both carbs and proteins combined, just about. They, one gram of pure lipids, is equal to about four, not four, but this time, nine kilocalories. <clears throat> and in addition, lipids are usually consumed as what are known as triglycerides. So this is a molecule we've gone over in Bio 1. Just to remind you, a triglyceride is just a glycerol molecule, a glycerol head, in addition to three fatty acid tails, so three FAs. That's why we have a triglyceride. Three um, hydrocarbon fatty acid tails will give us lipids. So that's our sources of chemical energy. We either eat carbs, proteins, or lipids for the most part. That's where the majority of our chemical energy that is used to make ATP to drive all our cellular processes comes from. Carbs, proteins, and lipids. And we usually uh, figure out the term chemical energy and how much chemical energy based off of this idea of a kilocalorie. So that's one of our major nutritional needs, to get chemical energy to drive chemical processes within our cells. Another major nutritional need is the following, number two, and these are going to be organic building blocks. So not only do we need energy, but we need building blocks. 
specifically organic building blocks, carbon-based building blocks that can be assembled into macromolecules. Because again, we're not plants. As heterotrophs, we consume other things because those other things can be utilized for their energy or for their building blocks. So they can be then further assembled into what are known as essential, that's the key word here, macromolecules. When we talk about essential, that term, whenever it's in the context of nutrition, essential just means that you need to ingest. Okay? The source that's essential, we'll see essential fatty acids, essential proteins, etc. That just means that this needs to be ingested in order for the macromolecules to be assembled. And the ingestion part comes from the organic building blocks that are coming from whatever you may be eating. So essentially what we're focusing on with organic building blocks are two things. When we consume things, not only do we want energy from the, these sources, but we also want a source of carbon. Whatever we consume provides us with carbon. That's a very important chemical building block and an organic building block. And also whatever we consume usually provides us with a source of nitrogen. Carbon and nitrogen are two critical molecules, two critical elements, better word there, to utilize and definitely consume in order to build more important structures within us. This source of carbon usually comes from things like carbs, can come, sometimes come from proteins and mainly lipids. Um, the source of nitrogen almost exclusively comes from protein. So that's just a side note, and we'll see how that relates back. If you remember way back in Bio 1, we stated that the majority of an organism is composed of 90% four elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, CHON, C-H-O-N. This really sort of exemplifies that because we need to consume so much carbon, consume so much um, nitrogen in the right amount and the right type of stuff in order to create successful organic building blocks as we'll see. So that covers our intro look at nutritional needs of an adequate diet. We also understand now what nutrition is. We'll conclude by looking at the final nutritional need in the next video.